Hey everyone, we are starting chapter three today um, and looking at lines and angles. So the first thing that we're gonna do is talk about the relationships between different types of lines, especially when we look in three dimensions. So parallel lines are coplanar lines that will never intersect. Um, it's gonna be really important that we add this part that is coplanar um, because you'll see why here in just a second when we start talking about another line. But coplanar lines are line, or parallel lines are coplanar lines that do not intersect. So if we look at our figure over here, EG is parallel to FH. EG is also, ooh, right in the place here. EG is also parallel to BD, and EG is also parallel to AC. All four of those lines are running vertically, and I can draw one plane through any two of them. Okay, so even though the plane that contains EG and BD is not drawn, I could very easily draw one in that goes this way and connects here. Even though it's not drawn, it's still I can I still have the ability to draw a plane that connects them. So they are still parallel. Okay? The next thing that we're going to look at is perpendicular lines. So perpendicular lines are lines that intersect to form 90 degree angles or right angles. Okay, so if I look here at AE, it is perpendicular to AB because we are shown this little right angle box here. So that means that it's going to be perpendicular. Um, so AE is also going to be perpendicular to AC. And AB will be perpendicular to AC as well. Everything in this little corner is going to be perpendicular. Okay. Um, skew lines. Here we go. This is why we, it's important we determine whether or not it's coplanar. So skew lines are non-coplanar lines that do not intersect. So if I look, for example, at line EG. Here's EG. Okay. I can't use any of the ones that are parallel, but like if we look at AB, EG and AB, these are going to continue on in these directions. This is going to continue on up and down. They're never going to intersect, yet they are not parallel. So when we start moving three-dimensional lines, it is not enough to say that lines don't intersect. We have to know whether or not they're coplanar so we can tell the difference between lines that are parallel and lines that are skew, okay? Then the next thing that we're gonna look at is parallel planes. Planes that are parallel are two planes that are never going to intersect. So if I look here at this top plane, ABF, or ABFE, either way is fine. Okay, if I look at this top plane, it is going to be parallel to this plane down here that is on the bottom. Okay, so the top and bottom planes in our little kind of cube happening here are parallel. I also know that if I look, and I can kind of ignore this and erase that, and I could say that the left and right planes here and here, are also parallel because they're not going to intersect even when they're fully extended. Okay, I could also say the same thing for the front and the back planes that they are parallel as well. Okay, so if you have any questions about any of these four terms, please go ahead and write them down on your um, note-taking guide right now and we will address them in class. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is using those um, different types of lines and planes. So the first thing that we're going to look at is we are going to identify a pair of parallel segments. Okay, there are multiple pairings here, but I'm just looking for two lines that are running in the same direction, okay? They are coplanar and they don't intersect. So for example, if I look at my lines that are going vertically, I can say that segment SN is parallel. Notice that this is the symbol right here for parallel, okay? It's two little lines that are 
but look parallel. Okay. I can say that it is parallel to um, KP. Let's take a look at some of the notations that are on here. You see these arrows? Okay. The double arrows show that these lines are parallel. So these two arrows, these two arrows, these two arrows, these two arrows means that all four of these are parallel. So I could say that SN is parallel to KP, which is parallel to LQ, which is parallel to MR. Okay, oh, that's a really wonky Q. Ooh, this is a really big eraser. Okay, so all four of those segments are parallel with each pair because when you do two of them at a time, you can draw a plane through them. They're running in the same direction. Okay. Um, then we look at the single arrows. That's also showing parallel, but it's showing that those four are parallel to each other, but not parallel to the other ones. It's just like when we did um, segments and I said, okay, these two segments are congruent and th these two segments are congruent, but they're not the same. It's the same thing here. We can show one arrow to show two lines are parallel. We can use two arrows to show that a different pair of lines are parallel. Okay, so I could also say that NK is parallel to ML, which is parallel to QR, which is parallel to SP. Okay, those are all of those that are running kind of diagonally towards the back. Then I could look at all the ones that are running this way. So KL and MN and SR and PQ, all of those are parallel as well. Okay, the next thing that we're going to look at is a pair of skew segments. Okay, so again, what I want to look for here is two lines that are not going to intersect and are not parallel. Okay, so I'm going to just pick SN and start there. Okay, so I could say SN and KL because they're not touching, okay, and they're not going to intersect. Okay, so I could say SN and KL or SN and ML. Okay, because this one is not going to intersect SN and it's not going to be parallel. Same thing here with PQ and QR. Okay, each of them individually is going to be skewed to SN. Are they skewed to each other? No, but they are skewed to SN. So when you're doing work with these and it says name a pair, you only have to name one pair. Right now we're naming more because I'm showing you all the different possibilities here. All right, a pair of perpendicular segments. So we're looking for a pair of segments that are going to make a 90 degree angle. So let's just kind of keep our SN going on here. And notice here's my little right angle box. So I'm just going to say SR. It is perpendicular to several others. It can be perpendicular to SR, to MN, to KN, or to SP. Um, so all of those are possibilities for our perpendiculars. All right, and then when I look at a parallel pair of parallel planes again, we're looking kind of at the same thing that we did before with top and bottom, left and right, or front and back. Pick a pair, it's not really going to matter. So I'm just going to pick top and bottom. So plane M, N, K, L, and plane um, R, S, P, Q. Okay, so those are my two planes that are parallel. Again, if you have any questions, please go ahead and write those down now. Okay, the next thing that we're going to look at is transversals. Anytime you have one line intersecting two other lines, that can be considered a transversal. Okay, corresponding angles are going to happen when you have two lines that are intersected by a transversal. Okay, and they are in the exact same location. So what you're going to look for is notice that when your transversal hits each of these uh, lines, it's going to create a group of four angles. Okay, 
corresponding angles are going to lie in the same place in the same location. So notice that angle 1 up here is above and to the left of the line. Okay? Angle 5 is above the line to the left of the transversal. So it's above and to the left, just like angle 1 is above and to the left. Those are corresponding angles. Another pair of corresponding angles is angle 3 and angle 7. Okay? Another pair is angle 4 and angle 8. And a fourth pair is angle 2 and angle 6. So all of those pairs are corresponding angles because 1 and 5 are top left, 2 and 6 are top right, above this pair of lines in these groups. 4 and 8 are bottom right, and 3 and 7 are bottom left, so they're below the line and to the left. Okay? Alternate interior angles. Okay, so those are going to be sides that are between your two lines. So notice here in this picture, it's kind of shaded that reddish orange, and the interior angles are what's between your two lines. Okay? Alternate interior angles are on alternating sides of your transversal, which again is line T here. So groups on the inside, one from each set of four. Okay, so three and six are interior angles, one from each group, but on alternating sides of your transversal. The same thing's going to happen with angles four and five. Okay, so angles four and five are another pair of um, alternate interior angles. We can also abbreviate these as AIAs. All right, and you will see me use that abbreviation. When we look at alternate exterior angles, okay, alternate exteriors are similar to interiors, except now the two angles are on the outside of your two lines, which is where we have this kind of blue highlight. So one and eight, those are on the outside of our two lines, but they're on alternating sides of our transversal. Okay, our other set is angle two and angle seven. Okay, those are on the outside of the lines, but on either side of that transversal. Again, one in each group of four angles. And we call these AEAs. And then when we look at our same side interior angles, so again, we are looking at what is highlighted in the middle here because they're interior. And same side simply means that they're on the same side of the transversal. So 3 and 5 right here are on the same side of the transversal. Okay, so those are same side interiors. 4 and 6, those are also same side interiors. Okay, so we can call these SSIs. And no, there's not really a cor uh, an abbreviation for corresponding angles. I just tend to write C-O-R-R. Okay. So again, questions on that, go ahead and write them down and we're going to move on to the next slide. Okay, I want to list my um, groups of angles here. So it says give an example. We're going to list them all out. So corresponding angles. So angles that are in the same location. So angle one and angle five because they are both above the line and to the left of my transversal. So this is going to be my transversal right here. Here's the two lines I'm intersecting. One group of angles, two group of angles. Okay. So the next pair is four and eight because they are to the left of the transversal but below the line. Okay. Then we have angle two and angle six. They are to the right of the transversal but above their matching lines. Okay, and then angles three and angle seven, okay, they are to the right of the transversal and below the lines. All right, alternate interior angles. Angles that are, again, between your two lines. So if we look at angles four and six, they are on opposite sides of that transversal, but still between our two lines. So angle four and angle six. We have one other pair of alternate interiors which is angle three and angle five. Okay, let's look at alternate exterior. So we're on the outside of our lines on opposite sides of our transversal. So we have angle one and angle seven and angles two and eight. Okay, the video is about to run out, so please proceed to part two. I promise it will not be long. Thank you, and I will see you in like hopefully 30 seconds. Really, truly, go click the next video. We're going to finish up this example right then.